Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. I hope well, hope you enjoyed your Thursday, whatever it is that you're doing. It's a beautiful day out there. So if you're if you're down the down the pub, hope you're enjoying it. If you're still at work, I hope you're nearly done. And if you're home from work, kick your feet up, watch this, and enjoy a nice Thursday evening. We're talking a little bit around Mikel Marino. He's basically been touted as one of the new targets for Spurs. So I'll give my opinion about you know, him as a player, his contract, his value, his stats from last year, but also my opinion if this is the right move, do you expect us to go for him? Kind of the full work, okay? So let me talk about where this has come from. So this came from Fihas Football, who put out that Tottenham Hotspur have included Real Sociedad midfielder Mikel Marino in their target list for next season. Spurs could see both Pierre-Emil Hoiberg and Giovanni Celso leave the club in the coming windows, and this has sent them to start looking for a new midfielder. The Spain international's ability to recover balls, vision, distribution and versatility makes him, quote, complete midfielder. And it's claimed he fits perfectly into Postacoglu's plans at the North London club. Spurs see a golden opportunity to bolster the midfield with Marino, but are expected to face competition as other clubs have also shown an interest to sign him in 2024. So, a lot of that is interesting. I think we're expecting Hoiberg to go. I think that's fair. I think we're waiting to see how this season goes with Gio. Gio might be gone next summer for sure if it hasn't kind of gone the way we thought it was going to go, potentially even in January. Um, that's why I think Spurs, if they do lose more than one midfielder in January, they will look to replace them. I think, you know, look, Ben Tancor is back in November. He's going to have a good six, eight weeks to kind of get himself back to game speed, playing quite a lot of football at Spurs. That might allow Hoiberg to step out the door because there you go. You've got a guy that's coming in now. You know, he's rocking and rolling. But if you lose another one, you need to replace that one, right? The reason I think Mikel Marino is very interesting is from his stats from last year, which I will go through in just a second, but is also his age and his value, okay? So let me talk about his value really quickly. So his contract actually expires in June 2025. So when we're talking about buying him next summer, he's only going to have one year left on his deal. We sign a new one, I don't know. But if he's not going to, Sociedad obviously you're going to want to cash in on him. He is a capped Spanish international. He's played 17 times. Uh, he plays a lot of football at Sociedad, week in, week out football. And Transmark actually valued him, this was in the middle of June, at 50 million euros. So it's an interesting, it's an interesting amount. It's an interesting target. The reason why I say that is he is actually 27. I know what you're thinking. That's not the Spurs. That's not the Spurs ethos right now. Um, he's actually younger than me. He's about four months younger than me. So if you don't think I could play for Spurs still, shame on you. That's really offensive. All right, I don't look a day over 18. I can, st I can still put a shift in. <laughs> Bringing on the water bottles, maybe. Uh, um, so the age doesn't suit what Spurs want to do. Spurs want to kind of get people before they get their big contract, if you know what I mean. So what I mean by that is you get a youngster. He gets his first contract in terms of being a youngster. He then gets his second contract once he becomes the first teamer. Spurs kind of want him at that point before he gets to that big contract, which in theory Spurs might be that big contract, but Spurs want to kind of get ahead of that game. He is obviously well past that game and he's probably about another contract after that past that game. So 50 million euros right now, yes, that might be, let's say, 30 to 40 million euros next summer. It's a lot of money for a guy who will be 28 next summer. You know, he might give you a good few years still, but it doesn't suit what Spurs are wanting to do timeline-wise. And that's why I'm finding it a bit difficult to understand. What I don't find difficult to understand is the guy can create opportunities. He played 33 times in La Liga last season. He only scored two goals, but he assisted nine times. So every three games, he has a goal contribution. Which, when you look at our formation of the two number eights of Madison, and let's call it Pape Matassar right now, Madison is obviously the creative kind. Papa Massar is the one that, you know, is box to box, creates a little bit, but nothing too wild, can sometimes pop up with a goal, which obviously still would suit Benton Court to the absolute ground. But against a low line block team that maybe you, it's going to take time to break down, if you could have 
two number eights on the pitch who could create one an- for one another, maybe that would be best. You know, I, I know obviously we have Giovanna Celso right now, and maybe Gio and Mad- Madders might be that that uh, that combo that allows us to do that. I'm not saying we would. I'm just giving you a hypothetical. Marino does seem like the same sort of style. He can create a lot of opportunities. And if we are going to lose Giovanna Celso, who actually, one second, if we lose Hoiberg, I do think Benton Coy is Hoiberg's replacement. I think when we talked about this summer, if Hoiberg was to go, we want a replacement, it was because we weren't going to have Benton Coy till November. Now Hoiberg's still here. Benton Coy's back in November. By January time, I, ex- I do expect Hoiberg to move on because you can say, well, Benton Coy is now the replacement. Because if you've got Skip backing up Basuma and you've got Hoiberg backing up Papa Massar, well, you just pick up, move Hoiberg, slot in Bentencourt. Done, right? Which I think is good because then it allows you to free that money up to go towards a central defender. It goes towards a striker, you know what I mean? The interesting thing is if Lo Celso goes, I do genuinely think they will have to look to replace him because we don't have a lot of creative midfielders. Madison is the guy. If Madison is injured and Giovanni Celso is not there, you need to have the guy there to be Gio's replacement. So very interesting on that. Just to give you kind of an update, do I think it's going to happen? I think no, I'm honest. And I know I've had some people kind of go, you think we're signing everyone? I don't think we're signing everyone. I'm just trying to report you some facts and give you some opinions. If you think I think we're signing everyone, then sorry, obviously that's not the way the world works, regardless of football. I don't see a sign in the Colonel Marina. I don't think it suits the timeline of where the club is going to be or wants to be. I think, you know, when we went from being one of the oldest squads last season to now being one of the youngest squads, when we're signing players like Brennan Johnson, who's in his early 20s. Now, Madison is 26, but we really needed that creative midfielder. Madison can still give you a good six, seven years. When you look at our midfield, Papa Massar, early 20s. Kulisewski, early 20s. Son is the oldest statesman of the group, but you've got to have some experience in the group at some point. You know, Vicario is in his mid-20s, and as a keeper, that's very, very young. You know, Mickey Van Aven, very young. Udogi, very young. A lot of that team is very young. We've, we've shifted, and I think we shouldn't shift back a little bit to the experience side unless we're losing a very experienced player. So if Son was to go, it might not be the end of the world to have that experience replacement. I don't know. I'll, I'll be interested to see what you guys think. But yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. But we'll keep an eye on it. It's, it's an interesting rumour. And he's a very good, talented player. There's no denying that. And you know, he would give us a different option, which is always a nice thing. And that's why I think that's the key part. We're having interesting options potentially putting on that list. And that list is being there. We're looking at midfielders. And that's also an interesting thing to take on. So expect more rumours to come out as the weeks go by. But guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you did enjoy it. Drop a like on the video if you did. Hit me in the comment section about Mikel Marina. Would you want him? If you do, why? If you don't, why? I want to know. I want to have that conversation with you all. Um, subscribe to the channel if you are new and hit the bell notification for more. I will have a preview hopefully out tomorrow around the Spurs Sheffield United game for the weekend. Ange Ball's back, baby. And I can't wait. Anyway, guys, that's the end of the video. And I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, guys.